Come on in. Come on, let's do this interview now. Come on, it's a long time coming. Professor McAllister, yeah. thank you for the honor, sir. I, I'm still here educating the people, um, basically at the uh, School of New Resources, the College of New Rochelle, but uh, I'm going to interview you for my uh, New York City graduate chapter of Groove Five Groove, and hopefully uh, Swing Five Swing chapters around the country can listen to your interview because you're going to cover the historical experience that you have had coming up in campus. I earned my Bachelor of Arts in 2001, my Master of Science in 2003 from the Graduate School, www.cnr.edu. Okay, now we got that out the way. Yes. MC Juicy E came into MCN in 1977. I actually began studying a B-girl by the name of Vanessa Branch in 1970. When I was five years old in South Jamaica, Queens. Okay. I was born in the South Bronx, August 11th, 1965. I am one of the first women to DJ and MC in hip hop history. I actually precede hip hop. So look me up on Instagram and Twitter, Eva Marie King, E V A M A R I E K I N G. I still rhyme, I still DJ, I still do battles in New York City parks and projects, authentic battles. I've never lost an MC or a DJ battle, and I never will. Wow. So I teach, I train, I mentor, I work with young women who are being forced to be pole dancers and prostitutes in the sex industry. They come to me all the time crying, saying that they want to get out of it, and I get them out. So many of the so-called pimps or max that you might see on the street, they don't like me, but I don't care because my young sisters will not be sex slaves for anyone and that's happening in new york city in the inner city so you know about it say something don't have these young girls being uh, sex slaves and, and working as pole dancers and don't say oh that they should know better a lot of them don't know how to get out of it they're afraid they're being beaten they're being threatened and they need another way so for me to speak to them and to rhyme to them and to double up for them once they see my rhyming skills Wow, maybe I can do that. Yes, you can. Sometimes all you need is someone to tell you you can do something That's right. and you can do it. Me, I'm very confident and I know that I will prevail. I will keep studying and do my research to get into Harvard Law School and earn my Juris Doctorate. Let me ask you something. Now, I, I just shot, I recently shot a video in Brooklyn about anti, stop the anti um, gun violence. Yes. What do you think about that in terms of the inner, inner cities? with the guns and all of that. It, it, this whole month they're gonna uh, dedicate it to that. Well, I mean, we we spoke a little bit previous to you shooting and I showed you my brother's death certificate yes. who died of two gunshot wounds to his posterior neck. His name was Shaquem Allah. His government name was Mark Perry King. He taught me how to shoot CeeLo, play basketball. He taught me how to protect myself on these streets as we grew up in the 60s and 70s in South Jamaica, Queens. and. He was my protector as an MC when I battled in Basie Project. So I rhymed. And the other crew that we battled, they rhymed. But they did never call me out of my name because my brother and his crew, Born Freedom, I lock him, was standing right there. So they were waiting for a brother to call me out of my name. That never happened. So that kept the battles clean. It kept it respectful. Because the brothers knew that if you disrespect the wrong person in that crew, it was going to come from behind the microphone and the turntables, and you were going to be dealt with after that. Wait a minute, are you trying after to... That, I'm saying there were fights, not gunfights, but there were yeah. definitely fist fights. So what are you telling me, that the turntable was the weapon? That's I'm telling you, telling the turntable me? was the conflict resolution. Wow. But if you didn't follow the rules, and you disrespected the crew, you went too far over that line and said the wrong thing about their mother, their father. Like, there was a standard back in the 70s. Okay. You couldn't... You couldn't call somebody a sister uh, the B word right. or, you know, the W-H-O-R-E word. You couldn't do that and then walk out of the park and think you're going to floor us the whole week around the community and say, oh, I call MC Juicy E. No, because my brothers who were hard rocks were going to step to you. They weren't DJs or MCs. They were straight up hard rocks. And they were like, you're not going to say that about my sister, knowing that I was a student, knowing that I was a uh, artistic person in the community and that we were just having fun. So... There was a control by the youth in the early days of mobile DJing and MCing out in South Jamaica, Queens, and throughout the city. Now, this is before the term hip-hop even became a part of what you youngins might say, oh, that's hip-hop. Hip-hop, in terms of my crew in South Jamaica, Queens, we never used that word. Mm. That didn't come about until Sylvia Robinson started Sugar Hill Records, and in about 1979, with recorded rap and hip-hop, 
that term became part of the culture. We never use that. I would say, oh, I'm going up to Bronx River to a center jam. Oh, I'm going to a park jam. I never said I'm going to a hip hop jam. Wow. I never said I'm a hip hop DJ. I never said I'm a hip hop MC. And the pioneers in the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan, they could bear witness to that. You know, that's but, what it was. But hip hip is not a new word. It was using hip going way back. Oh, I'm hip. Remember that? I'm well, hip. Well, yeah, I'm hip, but yeah. hip hop. So <laughs> based on my research, hip hop, and I spoke to Love Bug Starsky. Yeah, who threw the hop in the hip? Right. Right. Hip hop. And he told me, DJ Love Bug Starsky told me back in 2002 on a telephone call when I was a student at the graduate school. He said, I coined that term. Now, some folks say, who? DJ Lovebug Starsky. Now, he's famous for DJing and MCing at the same time. Right. He told me he coined that term. Wow. Now, there are also wow. statements that say Cowboy from the Furious Five coined that term. Okay. Now, the Universal Zulu Nation, based on my research, made up the five elements of hip-hop. Okay. DJing, MCing, b-boying, and b-girling, graffiti, and then the fifth element was knowledge. Now, they took it a step further with the sixth element being Ernie Panicoli or photography. Ernie okay. Panicoli is considered the, the father of hip-hop photography. He was the chief photographer at Word Up Magazine, and he's one of my great mentors, okay. I'm happy to say. Um, but that's a regional thing. And anyone from the Bronx don't get bent out of shape. I'm not saying the Bronx did not champion, you know, were so innovative in MCing and b-boying, but the movement came up throughout the city. It wasn't invented in the Bronx, and then Queens came and learned it. No, it was different. You know, we had the Black Panther Party headquarters on what used to be called God Rule, what us old heads called God Rule Boulevard, what you youngins call, uh, excuse me, what us old heads call New York Boulevard. What you youngins call God Brewer Boulevard now. There was a Black Panther Party headquarters. And there was also the Seven Crowns had a headquarters on God Brewer. So they had private parties. Shout out to Big Hunch because he was a part of the Seven Crowns and his brother, Sleeping Paradise. Jamaica was a part of the Seven Crowns. This information that I'm paraphrasing is coming from him. Where they did two turntable DJing going back to the late 60s, early 70s at these Seven Crown parties. The DJ who taught me, Robert Davis, started two turntable DJing in 1971. So, in terms of it becoming hip hop with cool DJ Hurt mixing break beats, that's all true. But the issue I have with the Bronx saying, "Oh, we created hip hop," it to a ten year old, they might go, "Oh, does that mean they created two turntable DJing and MCing?" No, doesn't mean that. As far as innovating Bronx MCing style. You can't duplicate that. You couldn't duplicate that back in 1976 when I started going to the Zulu Nation jams at Bronx River Community Center. Okay. You cannot duplicate the b-boying that came out of the Bronx. They the illest. Queens, we were more into the DJing, the long-form DJing, the park jams to 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning. You can't take anything away from Disco Brothers Connection. Kevin James, he's now a supervisor with Human Resource Administration. He was in St. Louis Park in 1974. I'm giving y'all untold history. Yes. With the party doctors who were from Staten Island. Now, many of y'all don't know that there were mobile DJs in Staten Island. These mobile DJs had massive sound systems. They drove around that city in vans and just stopped at a park and just did a jam. There were no laws on the books that said you couldn't have amplified equipment in parks. That's why in the 70s we had these park jams. Where I grew up, Merrick Boulevard in Linden, there was a park, still is, St. Louis Park. James Brown had a house near there. Count Basie had a house near there. They did free concerts in St. Omer's Park. When they took an intermission, a DJ played. So we had music in that community. If you know anything about St. Omer's, Billie Holiday had a home. Ella Fitzgerald had a home. Really? Roy Campanella had a home. And there's a St. Omer's tour of the great jazz artists. Wow. So the reason they had homes, and I'm giving you more history, yes. is because in the 40s and 50s, they couldn't live up on the Upper East Side. So they made their own community of homes in Addisley Park, in a section of St. Albans. As a young woman who lived on 118th Avenue, we used to ride our bikes to Addisley Park, which is about 10 blocks from my house, my childhood home. So there's a lot of music history, and there's a lot about the true history of Southside Jamaica hip-hop that I'm telling. And it started with Cypher Sounds in 1975, in terms of that hip-hop style DJing. So Cypher Sounds were five percenters. DJ Divine Knowledge, DJ Divine Justice, 
DJ Understanding God. DJ Understanding God is Tony Moore. He's a famous video and filmmaker now. DJ Divine, many know as DJ Divine from Infinity Machine. He left Cypher Sounds and went to Infinity Machine. So many of the pioneers and legends in the Bronx know of Infinity Machine. They know of Cypher Sounds. But what I'm bringing to the forefront are the dozens of crews such as Jamaica Sounds, Atomic Sounds, the Diablo Brothers, my crew, the Eminem crew, Fantasy Disco. They had sound systems that consistently played in the park from about 1975 to like 1981. And shout out to DJ Mason DeWitt. He still goes in the park. So there's a rich history that has to be told that will precede the term hip hop. But we use the same instruments. We use two turntables and a mixer. I rhymed in 1976 on 169th Street in Foch. I began MC battling in 1977. So think about this. Do your research on MC Shah Rock and Queen Lisa Lee. And if they started rhyming in 1977, MC in 1977, and so did I, then why would not be considered a pioneer? That's Are true. you going to say I'm not because I didn't record? My parents didn't let me record records. But I still am part of the movement. I still made a contribution. So my contribution is no less than theirs, even though I was in another part of the city. And I'm still nice. I still have poetry. I still got bars. The young people tell me I have bars, so I must have bars. All right. So we're going to do a part two to this. Um, I'm going to ask you next time if you have any aspirations to do some recording. All right. So this is the big old cha-cha Groove Groove, New York City graduate chapter, bringing it to you. Our pleasure at Howard University in 1972. Until next time, Eva Marie, I'll see you. I might throw the beat on, throw a little beat back. Go. We ready, we ready, we ready, we ready. Queens get the money, Queens get the money, South Side, we outside. Uh -huh. My brother right here. I'm just saying, he not that nice. I go to Margarita Pizza and get me a slice. Huh? It's like four, five, six on the CeeLo slice, and I get more sex than a cat chase mice. A B-boy and fly guy, that's twice as nice. I'm never getting married, so save your rights. You say, I need this meal. I say, Jesus Christ. You say, all right, I said peas. I say, peas and rice. Nice. Professor is on the slice. CNR.edu. Class of 2001, class of 2003 graduate school. Stay in school. CNR.edu. And we through.